Let's find some day trades, swing trades, and option traders. It is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. We're about three hours into trading. It is June 19th. We had a huge market sell-off just recently here. Let's take a look at what the market's doing today. We had this gap higher on the SPY. We're challenging the high from earlier in the week. That 315 level seems to be providing some pretty decent resistance. Let's take a look at the daily chart. You can see that resistance level forming right there. If we can get above it, we'll start to fill in this little gap right in here. However, we also had a little bit of a gap right here on Tuesday, and that was filled again. Got this nice upward sloping trend line. We've got the major moving averages come into play at about 300 and 295 on the SPY. This is a major, major technical support level. If it fails, We've got to get bearish. As long as it's holding, I'm going to continue to sell out of the money bullish put spreads, which, by the way, on my Wednesday night video, we put out seven new bullish put spreads, have not gotten filled on any of them, and that's because we needed a market pullback. We needed a pullback in these stocks in order to get filled. These stocks are so strong that they rallied most of the day Thursday. They rallied out of the gate today, so they've got to come in really really hard for us to have any kind of chance at getting filled on them today we have two bullish put spreads that will be expiring worthless and we will be 100 percent cash haven't been in that position since the middle of february well, what does that tell you that tells you that i'm erring on the side of caution right here i think that we've got some crosswinds right now we have a surge in coronavirus cases i think that that's going to prolong the recovery that was the reason for the sell-off today. And you can see how that sell-off accelerated right in here. And that was on news that Apple was going to be closing some of its stores or it may close some of its stores. So there are concerns right now that the coronavirus is going to prolong everything and it could impact consumption. Consumer spending is the key. Now, to this point, asset managers have been comfortable being long the market because they know that the Fed is out there buying corporate bonds. They know that there's going to be loose monetary policy through 2022. No interest rate hikes until then. The Fed has told us that. We also know that there's an infrastructure bill that may be getting passed for $1 trillion. That's good. There's also another fiscal stimulus plan that's already been approved by Congress, by the House, I should say not by the Senate. So if this economic recovery struggles, you can bet that they are going to do everything imaginable to kickstart this economy. But the coronavirus is a bit of a concern right now. Stock valuations are a little bit stretched. So let's see what happens in here. This is a great time to be on the sidelines. I feel that some of the activity today is influenced by quadruple witching. Once the programs sense direction like this. So this is a bearish gap reversal. And typically you're going to get these in the first 45 minutes of trading. You're going to know if one is setting up. The telltale sign for that is a gap higher, a gradual drift lower with lower highs, which we had, and the low of the day, which would have been from this first bar, is taken out. If you see that formation, then you know that you've got a chance for a bearish reversal. So I didn't pay attention to the warning signs. What I was looking at was this nice 1OP cross right in here, right in here. I saw some long tails under body, so I started to buy. I felt that we had tested the prior day's high or at least gotten very, very close to it, that we should be able to find some support in here. We had a nice little cross in here, so I got long. I was long a number of stocks. And I'm going to put those stocks up because I'm going to show you the process that normally works really well for us. It didn't work so well today. If I would have paid attention to what the SPY was doing, I would have stayed on the sidelines and waited for those signs of support. Market first. Market first. Market first. I cannot preach that enough. And today, I failed to respect this gap reversal. So I paid the price for it. You can see right now, long tails above body. This long green bar right here was short covering. We're going to see continuation. This market is going to continue to drop in here. So as I'm doing this presentation, you can watch that. I'm also going to put up a chart of QQQ because you know that we trade relative strength. And while the SPY was 
falling, the QQQ was treading water. So here you can see the gray line is the SPY. This is the QQQ with the green and red bars. And you can see how it was holding up extremely well. It wanted to go higher in a very big way. And so we were in stocks, tech stocks, that were very, very strong relative to the market. While the market did come in, those stocks were treading water. They were ready to just blow up higher. But now that we've had a waterfall event like that, everything starts to move lower. So QQQ is also moving lower. And you can see how it eventually gave up all of those gains. And now it is testing the low from yesterday. Let's go into a one hour chart, see how significant this is. You can see that there's pretty major support right here on QQQ around that 242 40 level that should hold and uh, let's take a look at some stocks that we were in this morning I'll show you that relative strength and you can see what we were looking at SHOP I was in that early today so there's the market down 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 there's the stock up 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 I did make four dollars on that I also like Roku Roku was a stock that I highlighted yesterday I loved it so if you got long in yesterday's video Really nice price action into the close, held up very, very well. There you can see how the market was down and the stock was moving higher. Here you can see market was down, stock was moving higher. That's relative strength. Beautiful, beautiful pick. If you got long that on the open today or near the close yesterday, you still had a fantastic opportunity to exit with some nice profits. But you had to take profits in here as the market was starting to come in at some point in time. I was in Roku overnight. I posted that in the chat room. I bought more Roku this morning. Had a decent average price. I did sell that for a 13 cent loss. So that was one of my losers today. Uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA was another stock that I bought on the open. I did make money on the stock, but I lost money on some options. I love this breakout right here to a new high of the day when the market was starting to crumble. I felt that that market support was going to hold. And if we got just a tiny little bounce in the market, that the stock would be off to the races. I took a $2 gain in NVIDIA, but I am long some lotto calls. Those are the 380 calls that expire today. In all likelihood, with the stock down here at the 371 level, those calls are going to be toast. That's what happens with lotto trades. You have to assume that those trades are going to go to zero, but they often go up two or three fold. So never got that opportunity because the selling really set in. Facebook was another stock that I was long. I lost a dollar five cents on that. You can see the nice move higher, compressing, compressing, compressing while the market was coming in. I felt really good about being long. Facebook, so I was willing to let the market continue to come in. I did take a dollar and a half loss on that. So another loser, BBBY. Really nice relative strength in here. I did make uh, 15 cents on that one. That's a $10 stock, so that actually turned out quite well. Now we're getting a little bit more of a bounce right in here off of this low. So let's see what continues to form here on the SPY. Got that deep, deep trough in the 10P indicator just starting to get across, but I wouldn't trust the first bounce after a drop like that. So in any event on BBBY, yes, I set my target, took a 15 cent gain in that. That was holding up beautifully until we got this big sell-off in the SPY. So another nice little winner for me there. NVAX, I really like that. That was a good stock. I actually showed you a bullish put spread on this one, uh, selling the out of the money $51 put uh, buying the $50 put and doing that for a 15 cent credit. Really nice trade. That one only took about two days to run its course. That was a nice winner, probably in the 18 to 20% range. So really nice trade. I believe I highlighted that trade Wednesday. So Roku looked good. That was my pick of the day yesterday. By the way, I should also mention, I did take a two and a half point loss on the SPY today. I started scaling in right in here. I added to the position right in here. Once that low was taken out, I let everyone know in the chat room, this was kind of a key bar for me right here, this long red candle. Uh, we're getting some explosion alerts here. I'm going to disable this. And you can see how that stock is starting to drop right now. But in any event, I want to go back to this SPY because this was a critical juncture for me. 
right here you can see how we had this long red candle it looked like we were going to bounce we had some tails under body right in here and it looked like the market was going to bounce we had 10p starting to cross over after a deep trough so i liked all of that setup we needed to get through this downward sloping trend line which we we're just starting to do in here but that long red candle was a gigantic warning sign because we weren't able to build on this green candle as soon as we took out the low of the day i said okay this could be the cleanup folks i need to see a bullish hammer and then i need to stack another long green candle on top of it and then we could be off to the races we know that these programs on quadruple witching once they start to unfold they kind of feed on themselves so we needed to reverse this downtrend and that would have been our opportunity when it did not happen i stopped out on that trade right in here so good thing i did because i did not experience that huge drop haven't had a red day in a long time i am in the hole right now not dramatically i mean i had some decent winners today yes i had some losers as well so i'm going to be watching for the market to find some support in here it's quadruple witching there should be lots of volatility i think they're going to be some pretty good opportunities i'm watching this bounce right here i don't like what i see right now in the market so we're going to be watching our bullish put spreads that we're trying to enter very carefully seeing if we can get filled on some of those but the key to entering those trades was that we needed to have a market decline i'll show you a couple of the stocks that we're trying to get in on and you will see this video in entirety saturday on youtube i've released it to members wednesday night i publish it on youtube i post it to the public saturday so you'll be able to go through all the analysis in that analysis i made it very very clear that i do not want to jump the gun on any trades if we get filled it's going to be on a market pullback and it's going to be on a pullback in the stock and if we get that fine i'd be happy to take those trades my expectation is that support at spy 300 is going to hold we could test spy 295 that is the line in the sand spy 295 must hold that's the 100 day moving average that's also a horizontal support line that's also an upward sloping trend line so because of the market sell-off today i should probably reinforce that there's your upward sloping trend line you can see how it comes into play right around uh well now it's up to spy 300 so that makes the 200 day moving average a little bit more significant it had been coming into play at spy 295 so there's the 200 day moving average this 100 day moving average is right at that horizontal support at 295 We've got converging technical support levels right here between SPY 295 and SPY 300. That has to hold. If this major technical support is breached, then we have to assume that we're going to come back and establish at some point in time a higher low, but from what level? That's the question. Do we come all the way back to this 270 level, which should be support right there? I'm not really sure. So I can drop an alert line right there also just by double clicking on that. So now I've also got support right in there that you can see visually. I don't think that this sell off is going to be as nasty as it might seem right now. Yes, the coronavirus is starting to accelerate again, but states are not going to shut down again. Social distancing, face masks, those are all going to help prevent the spread of it. President Trump has said we're not shutting the country down again. The recovery takes a little bit longer. Expect lots of money printing. Asset managers have nowhere to go with their money. If they go into fixed income, those yields are generating negative real returns because they don't keep pace with inflation. So uh, another one of these bearish alerts here. These are explosion alerts. We trade those all the time. And you can see same stock. It's continuing to... To fall in any event uh, let's take a look and see what we've got working today I'm going to look for a couple of bullish trades that might work out I'm going to take a look for a swing trade that I like out of the money that you might be able to sell today once the market does find support but it's very important that the market find support let me make this point very very clear this is in all likelihood going to be a bearish trend day You've got this steady, steady selling. You've got this nice downward sloping 
channel. Now, when that bottom of that channel is violated, typically you're going to get a selling climax and a rebound right back into the channel. Today, it just blew through the bottom. So there was some pretty heavy news. I don't know how high we'll be able to bounce. So we'll have to see. My suspicion is that the market's going to try and try and try to recover. But then as soon as it gets to this downward sloping trend line somewhere in here, it's going to stall out. So let's draw that alert line so that you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to click there. We're going to click there. Whoops. Drew that incorrectly. There we go. So this line's going to continue to extend down and extend down with each passing moment. I think there's a chance for us to maybe drift up to that downward sloping line, maybe around the 310 area, may coincide with this low here uh, from yesterday. And then I think the market's probably going to probe for support again. It's very, very hard to say. If you're going to buy, you've got to be in the tech sector. That is where the strength is. So, Let's take a look and see what stocks after such a nasty decline are actually holding up pretty well. We're going to go into relative strength 30. Of course, Netflix, that's a stock that I've really liked. We've got a Netflix spread that's going to be expiring today. I like Netflix. I think this has turned into a flight to safety stock. If coronavirus starts spreading again, people are going to continue to watch movies. You've heard me highlight this stock before. I like selling out of the money bullish put spreads keying off this horizontal support right here around the 395 level. Sell the 395 put, buy the 390 put, do that for a nice credit. We could take a look at that uh, stock today, uh, but I'm just going to keep moving. That's a credit spread that I think you should consider. You'll probably have to go out to July expiration to get a decent credit for that, but I do like it. Uh, w. We're looking at relative strength right now. Stock is breaking through that horizontal resistance. Cup and handle formation. Nice breakout. I think W continues to go higher. Retail stock with lots of online presence. So uh, Target actually was strong today. So Target was another one that looked pretty good. Now, this is pretty nice. You've got an upward sloping trend line here. You've got a horizontal breakout creeping higher. Strong relative to the market. Looks good. These are all on the relative strength 30. Adobe, beautiful. Earnings here, powering higher. I think Adobe continues to perform well. Look at that strong momentum. Gap higher today. Look at the stock get right back above the gap with the market having a free fall like that. Adobe wants to go. So would I go do a lot of bullish put spreads on Adobe? I think it's strong right now. If you're staying inside of two weeks, I think those spreads could work. I would probably lean on an upward sloping trend line like that. So draw your trend line in. And as long as that is preserved, I think that that's where you'd like to be selling your bullish put spreads is below that 390 level. That's $24 out of the money, but it is a $400 stock. So probably have to go a little bit further out in time to get that kind of credit or just wait for the stock to pull back a little bit. Wait for that support to establish and then you can sell that bullish put spread right down below that line. So you don't need to have those orders working right now. With this market decline, I would wait a little bit. See what happens. CRWD. Love it. You know that's been on my list for a while. Look at this breakout. Stock still able to hold the opening gap higher. Go into the four, five minute chart. And on a five minute basis, you can see that the stock is still higher than the open. Yeah, dip back in here, but look at how quickly it regained its footing. Still above the prior day's high. Looks nice. Chewy. I like Chewy. That's actually one of the stocks that we tried to sell an out of the money bullish put spread on. Haven't been able to get filled because the stock keeps doing what we expected. I love this little sell off right in here. We're through that horizontal resistance. That becomes horizontal support. I think that you could key off of that 4650 level. That's where I would be selling my out of the money bullish put spread. Now continues to go. Apple had been strong today before that news that it might be shutting down some of its Apple stores. So relative strength 30. Did you see how easy that was to find the best stocks? So bull run. We'll go into that one. Only one stock right now. TDOC. You can see how it's breaking through horizontal resistance. It's on its high of the day. Yeah, that would be one that I would suggest day trading. Look at that stock was off to the races. That's all it did during the market pullback. And then boom, 
right back to the high of the day. This stock wants to go. That's how we find them. That's how we day trade. Bullish 1OP cross. Again, I'd mentioned to you that I felt that this cross right in here uh, was going to be on a bounce that would eventually fail. I want to show you one other thing. When we had this right in here and we had this bullish hammer, we should have had follow through on that kind of 1OP rally. We should see boom, 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 higher. When we didn't get it, told everybody in the chat room, uh-oh, this is a really bad sign. When we get this kind of spike in 1OP and the market is drifting, drifting, drifting lower and filling in that bullish hammer, look out that's a warning sign that cross right there whoosh see you later so i also would be a little bit careful on this cross right in here i don't think this is going to be a good cross yet i think we've got more work to do on the downside maybe if we make a higher low double bottom with one op crossing again down in here then i might try some of the longs that i've shown you i haven't shown you any shorts because i still think that we need to focus on the long side We've got quadruple witching, creating some selling pressure, but we have the S&P 500 above those major technical support levels at SPY 300 and 295. So I'm still inclined to sell out of the money bullish put spreads. I think that with earnings season coming up, you're going to see the market go sideways. So we're transitioning from an uptrend right here to going sideways and how earnings pans out how the economic recovery pans out determines if we start to roll over and head back down or if we continue to go sideways and companies grow into their current valuations and then we have another leg higher perhaps late summer early fall so either scenario can play out right now we've got to be cautious on a swing trading basis day trading basis let's see if we've got anything lining up this is actually an interesting juncture that we've got right now because the market has rallied in the last 30 minutes so relative weakness 30 is going to show us stocks that are weak relative to the market in the last 30 minutes. We only have one candidate, BBIIB. You can see the steady selling here. So this is a good short. Why? Look at that rally in the market. Look what the stock has done. Sell, sell, sell. Now I'd love to see it below this prior day low with that kind of price action. This could provide some support to it. So until it gets down through this prior day low I'm probably not going to be shorting it so I'm going to click alert and I'm going to double click on that line right there you can see my alert line if BIIB gets below the prior days low and we get this market starting to roll over yep I'll be looking at it for a short let's go into that daily chart and see how it looks Ugh, nasty yes this is a good short tails above body below horizontal support below the 200 day moving average yep this is definitely a good short biotech company take a look at bear run see if we've got anything good going on here bbby we already saw that was just a big reversal it was strong earlier in the day just trying to find another stock that you might be able to use on the short side i think biib is good enough you've got one candidate to look at i think biib is an excellent shorting opportunity for you i wouldn't go nuts on the short side though even if the market starts to drift lower later today i still think that you want to focus on the long side wait for a very very late day bounce and uh we're probably not going to get much of a bounce until very late in the day perhaps the last hour of trading so we'll see We've got to get through this downward sloping trend line before I would try any longs. There is a chance that we could see some buy programs. Again, it is quadruple witching. If this reverses and now we start marching, 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 marching higher. Okay, fine. Then the programs will start to feed on themselves and then you'll see a nice steady V type of bottom. I don't know that that's going to play out today though. So be careful. I think that this is going to be a day with lots of volatility in it. My guess after a drop like that is that we see more weakness this afternoon and not a decent bounce until late in the day. We also blew right through the prior day's low. So wish I had a little bit more of a crystal ball on how the day was going to play out. Swing trading, 
Definitely want to be focusing on these pullbacks. Definitely want to be selling out of the money bullish put spreads on tech stocks. That is the play for swing traders. Day traders, tread cautiously in here. So what I would need to see in order for me to get short, I'd need to see a big spike in the 1OP indicator right here. I'd need to see a bearish cross. And then I'd like to see this upward sloping trend line right here violated on the downside. So I would click on that. I would click on that. So that is going to continue to extend up. If I get a big spike here and a rollover, then I think I could get short in here with pretty good confidence. So that's how I'm playing it. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. There's going to be a swing trading video that I post tomorrow. All seven of those bullish put spreads are still in play, so watch for that release. And I'm going to be doing a video Sunday night I'll come in, I'll check to see how the overseas markets are doing Sunday night. I'll see if I can find another good stock for Monday morning. So you're not going to know that these videos are posted unless you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you turn on your notifications. So please do that. I'll make sure to have a good trade for you in every one of these videos and lots of education. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.